Hi, so on the main channel we've obviously been working with water as a potential for generating electricity and we've been looking at the modern stuff, the latest research, the cutting edge stuff on tribal electricity and capacitance and using that as direct generators with this rainwater generator and we developed it into a rainwater wheel. But I don't only think that looking forward is the way to go. I also think there's a lot to be learned by looking backward. Now, some people think I'm as mad as a bag of kittens when I do something like that, but there's lots of reasons to do that. One thing is it's a tried and trusted technology that we know works. One of the issues with the modern stuff is you're not quite sure how well it's going to work and if it's going to answer any need because it's experimental. With the older stuff, we know it's been used, we know it works, and we know it can do something real. And that's what's so exciting about these water motors. Now, I've been researching a bit of the background on this and what potential it might have for doing something real and being a potential power source for us to do things like run our own houses. Now, these motors, they can give up to a third of a horsepower at this kind of size using the mains pressure. But of course, there's an issue with that. If everybody were doing that, the mains pressure would drop into your boots and nobody would be able to run a motor. And since 1999 in the UK, it's been illegal to extract power from mains pressure and you can understand why if people were doing it then the pressure would drop and we would get contamination of the drinking water and it would cause huge issues so running it directly from the mains is probably not going to be something we can do but I don't think that that's the end of the story I mean I was looking at water usage and the average water usage in the UK at the moment is something like 150 litres per person per day of which 30% nearly a third of it is just flushing the toilet that's about 50 litres a day per person going into the toilet. Now, if we had one of these in the actual, just before the cistern, of course, when you're filling the toilet, you go and you, you come out. It doesn't matter. It takes a while to flush. You're not going to go again for another hour or two at least. So it doesn't take, a, uh, it's not an issue that it takes time. And of course, that water you can scavenge the energy from as you're filling the cistern. Now, remember, this uses about two litres per minute. So a uh, average toilet at the moment takes about seven and a half liters. So you've got nearly three minutes of charge time. At 50 liters, you've got 25 minutes of charge time from your motor just for having a pee. 33%, oh sorry, 38% of it is used to have a bath or a shower every day. Same thing, when you're filling up the bath or you're having your shower, if you scavenge the energy from it, you've got another half hour, you've got an hour of scavenged energy there where you can actually do something like charge your phone. You do something with it just from scavenging the energy from water that you're consuming as an average after it's come from the mains. You wouldn't directly plumb one of these in. Now, you're still not getting that much from it, of course, and what it's relying on is the water pressure. It's not the volume of water. It's not like a water wheel that requires a volume of water. It's using the pressure of the water in order to uh, generate something. And this, of course, was used in Britain up until the 1960s and 70s. What they did was set up something called an accumulator. Now, an accumulator is something we are going to go into, so I'm going to explain. What an accumulator does is collects a fixed amount of water, supplies pressure onto it, and you use the water from the accumulator, not from the mains. The accumulator water can be taken from anywhere. It can be taken from rainwater. Once it's gone through its pressure cycle, you just keep it and pump it back into its pressure cycle. You can do that uh, when at non-peak rate. So in the evening, you collect the accumulator wastewater, put it back into the accumulator using cheap rate electricity, and then in the day when electricity is expensive, you run your accumulator to power your motor. Or you could actually pump it by hand or any other system to actually recharge that accumulator, and you use that pressurized water. Now, an accumulator is very little more than a tank with a watertight plunger, a volume of water, and a weight on the top. When you open it, that weight adds pressure to the water and you get pressure out of there. And that pressure was up to 800 psi. That's a lot of pressure. If you're putting that through a nozzle, you're talking about something that can cut steel. An accumulator has the advantage that that water can be turned around again and again and again, so you're not using mains pressure. As I say, we're going to do a separate video on accumulators and we are going to build an accumulator to explain a bit more about what accumulators are. But if we link water motors with an accumulator with the normal wastewater that we're actually just using from the mains we won't tax the mains supply and so suddenly it becomes usable 
as an alternative power source. Now, if you think of the accumulator as a battery, then you're actually looking at a battery that basically lasts hundreds of years. The accumulators that were used in the UK are still in existence. And they've been there since the 1900s and it's now 2022. They've been there 120 years and they're still working. If you buy a battery bank, that battery bank's got about five years maximum in it, probably three years. You need an awful lot of electronic control for a battery bank, but you need nothing, next to nothing, for an accumulator. So the thing lasts forever. Needs very little control. Is very green, because it's a stack of water, so it's not going to burn, it's not going to explode, it's not going to give off gases. There's just so much to recommend it that it's something that I think is seriously worth looking at, to look at a water system where you're storing the energy in a uh, water battery, an accumulator, discharging it at high pressure through a, a water motor, when you're going to be getting something like a kilowatt out of it, something like that. So this system has me um, fascinated at the moment. Now obviously we've been looking at the ways of making motors that is approachable to everybody. It's not something you need specialised tools for, not something you need to have cast, not something you need to worry about. It's something you could do with a handsaw. Okay, your percentage efficiency is going to go down if you do that, because the better you make it, the more efficient it is, obviously. And if you're doing other alternatives, the efficiency is the price you pay for the ease of construction. Now, of course, we are going to make Pelton wheels, and I've got a whole load of teaspoons right here for exactly that reason. And we're going to make a Pelton wheel and put it on magnetic bearings, absolutely. But you don't have to. If you wanted to do something, then you could make this version with hand tools and gain 50%. Because even though you may think of it as 50% efficiency, you're losing 50%. That's one way of looking at it, for sure. The other way is, if you don't get that 50%, you're throwing it away. You're wasting the 50% you could have got because you're daydreaming about the 50% you might get. So even doing something, 10% of something is a hell of a lot more than 0% of everything. And that's why we've been looking at these things, is because we're looking at how we might be able to do stuff from ground up, which anybody could do, to a more elaborate version, maybe, where you, yeah, it's going to cost you a bit more to do, but you're going to get an efficiency improvement. Anyway, I thought I would go through the possibilities of a water system, because water is um, more or less ignored as a potential but it can perform the same functions. It can be a battery, it can be a store, it can be a generator, and it can be renewable. We can constantly turn that around the cycle. We don't have to use pressure from the mains and chuck it down the drain. We can constantly turn it over and over again. So I think it has a, a lot that could be attractive to people, and it is very doable and very controllable and understandable by a huge range of people, and that's partly What's got me excited about it is that it has that potential to be a real, viable power source for running your home. Even if you don't have water on your site, even if you don't have a stream, even if you live in a flat, even if you live in a built-up area, it has tremendous potential for um, being a source of home generation. Anyway, I thought I would go through that because um, sometimes when we think of something we think that, uh, oh no, that's not doable because of this, this and this. And yet, it's actually very doable if we change our view of it a little bit. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying the series. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.